That simple improvised uh, musical phrase there, it's quite easy for me to do because uh, I've been playing for a long time, but how do I go about teaching that to these young musicians in the band there? You can sit down, guys. Well, a lot of people have said to me before, isn't jazz all just made up as you go along? And after I help them back up off the floor, <laughs> I say, well, no, not quite. Jazz, like all forms of music, has its own distinctive sound, its own language. And when we speak, we all use words and phrases we know already, don't we, to convey what we want to say. We can give a speech we've already prepared, or we can speak off the cuff, deciding what we want to say as we go along. And jazz and other forms of music that uh, feature improvisation are no different from that. We can play the bit we've prepared, the main melody, the bit you might recognize, but we can also make some stuff up play around with that melody, introduce our own ideas, playing off the cuff, therefore improvising. I'd just like to show you one approach I take to teaching young musicians the very beginnings of improvising. And when you're playing in a band like this, it can be quite daunting to get up and play in front of everyone, play a solo in front of everyone. So I'd like to start from a really simple point. Now, this is going to require a bit of audience participation. So that simple point we're going to start from is just one single sound, just a single note. I'd like you to sing it back to me. Oh, that's excellent. You can all go home early. Fantastic. OK, let's play around on that note for a little bit. Okay, let's add another note to that. Okay, now with just three notes there, we already have infinite possibilities for improvisation. We can play the notes in a different order, we can repeat the same notes several times, we can leave gaps, play long notes and short notes. So we've gone from that single sound, which we can think of as the equivalent of uh, a one word or one syllable, to building up words and building up phrases. And by copying what I'm playing there, you're really doing what a young child does when she first learns to speak, starting with a syllable and building it up into words. Let's try some phrases on those three notes. <laughs> Okay. Some of you almost tried that. I love that. Now, with the exception of that uh, last example there, you found that really easy just to copy what I played. You could hear it and sing it straight back. We're very good at that as human beings. Now, unfortunately for our young musicians in the band here, they're not human beings. No, I'm joking, they're definitely human. <laughs> but they do have the obstacle of a musical instrument. So we can hear the note, but we have to get it back out onto the instrument, and it's a bit like having to translate. So you'll hear that when I play them the first note, that first syllable we talked about, you might find there's a bit of trial and error trying to get the note. And that trial and error is really important. It's important to give them, I give them the space to, to have that uh, room for error. Um, because that's how we overcome problems. It's even more important they give themselves uh, room to make mistakes, to get over the psychological problem of the idea that I must get it right. No, you must get it wrong. That's how you learn stuff. So, let's just try a single note band. <laughs> So we found it eventually. You might have noticed the trombones got that note before everyone else, and that's because trombonists are better than everyone else. <laughs> or maybe because my slide was in, in an obvious position and they could, they could copy, they could use a visual aid of where the slide was there. OK, so let's try a second note. <laughs> OK, 
Now, like you, they could clearly hear that the second note was higher than the first note, but the question is, how much higher? Um, we have to know the interval between the notes, the musical interval, that's the distance between the two notes. And so we need to use listening skill to do that. We need to employ listening skills and develop them to be able to do that. But we also need to listen on a much more general level. We need to listen to lots of music. If you want to play a jazz solo, it's not much use if you haven't heard much jazz music before. So we might listen to Miles Davis, John Coltrane, Louis Armstrong, the person sitting next to us, and think, wow, that sounds really good. I'd love to sound like that. And so you imitate what they're playing, or try to at least. And you're never going to sound like, like those people. You're not, never going to sound like anyone, because everyone's got their own individual sound. But by trying, we find our own sound. And this is where making mistakes really comes in. If you've already decided that making mistakes is a bad idea, then when you play something different from what you intended, you then just discard it as wrong. But if we allow ourselves to make mistakes, we can play something we never intended to do and think, oh, I didn't mean to do that, but it sounds pretty good. I'm going to do it again. And that's finding your own sound, finding your own voice in the music. So let's try um, some phrases that we can repeat here, Ben. So we're going to start on that first note. Okay. Now, so far, we haven't really done much improvising. I've been playing uh, patterns and Everyone's been copying what I've played. So let's see what it sounds like if I play um, a group of notes, a little musical pattern, a riff, and get someone in the band to play back to me um, the same notes in a different order or introduce their own ideas uh, as they think of them. So Harry's ready with his trombone here. Yeah, Harry Whitty on the trombone. Okay. Now, what I'd love to see is young musicians that are learning musical instruments to sometimes get rid of this security blanket of the music in front of them. Chuck that away. Well, put it to one side if it's expensive. And learn bits of that music and try and noodle around on it, try some different ideas. And, you know, just try and improvise either with those ideas or ideas of your own. Or if you've got scales to do for an exam, we've all heard this before. <laughs> Dull as ditch water. But we can try and play with those ideas. And, and we're kind of really using those how they would appear in music. You don't really see a scale like ascending and descending in music like that. We hear them more like this. So I'd love to see more people doing that kind of thing and just experimenting. You know, music's a creative subject, so be creative with it. Now, what I'd like to do is show you what we can do with some of those ideas, those riffs, those three- and four-note riffs, and give them to the band to play. I'm going to give each section of the band a different thing to play and build up a whole new piece of music. Now, they have no idea what I'm going to... In fact, I have no idea what I'm going to do now. We're just going to try some things and see where we end up. So come on a musical journey with me. So, uh, Sam. Thank <laughs> you. 